about maybe it's a job insecurity maybe it's maybe it's fear regarding your own health maybe it's your children maybe it's your family um, there are very many reasons that could you know keep us like there could be good enough reasons for us not to be joyful and yet and yet the true presence of the spirit when he gives his spirit and when his spirit is in our heart we get the grace to even praise and worship him during difficult times and that is the beauty of the strength that god gives us that doesn't mean all problems go away but it just means that he gives the strength to carry on and as we begin with this first hymn bless the lord oh my soul I invite you, even if you do not feel like, to just open up your heart. Let us open up our hearts to the mighty presence of the Lord. When we just praise, that already defeats a lot of negativity that is probably in us, around us.
Praise be the name of Jesus. Dear friends, we have learned about our need for God, a God who is love, in the three persons of the Holy Trinity. We have also learned about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, who empowers us with his gifts and fruits. Now let me ask you a question. When do we receive the Holy Spirit for the first time? Is it at confirmation? One day, a charismatic preacher asked a group of young people, How many of you have received the Holy Spirit? All of them raised their hands. And all of them said they received the Holy Spirit at confirmation. Is that right? No. We have already received the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of baptism. Because no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not only that, the Holy Spirit abides with a person always. The Holy Spirit comes when a person prays or reads scripture, or when a person asks the Holy Spirit for guidance, inspiration or courage. Then what happens at confirmation? Confirmation is not the new arrival of the Holy Spirit, but rather an intensification of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. According to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the special outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Confirmation brings an increase and deepening of baptismal grace. 
among other things, the reception of the sacrament of confirmation gives us a special strength of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Christ, to confess the name of Christ boldly and never to be ashamed of the cross. In the baptismal waters, a person receives new life, life in the Spirit. In the anointing of confirmation, the same person receives the fullness of the Spirit. That is, confirmation completes what the grace of baptism began, bringing a deepening of grace in a special outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, the gifts seal the baptized person in union with Christ, imprinting on him or on her an indelible spiritual mark as the Lord confirms that they are his witnesses. I came across a story about two friends that could help us understand how the Holy Spirit will help us to bear witness to Christ as mature Christians. The story is about Peter and Lucas. Peter and Lucas went to the fair. They were enjoying the rides and stores at the fair. They went up and down and upside down the roller coaster. They went bump, bump, bump in the bump cars and even won a big teddy bear in one of the stores. Then there was the creepy house of horrors. I don't want to go in there, said Lucas. Are you scared? teased Peter. No, I'm not scared of anything. I went on the upside down roller coaster. Didn't I? That means I'm not afraid. But this one, said Lucas, it just doesn't feel all right. But that sounds you are scared, said Peter. No, scared is different, Lucas paused, searching for the right words. He said, it's like an alarm bell ringing inside of me, warning me not to go any further. Maybe it's God's way of letting me know there are things in the horror house that he is not happy about. How did you get an alarm bell inside you? asked Peter, looking into Lucas' ear, checking if he could see it. Did you swallow it? No, said Lucas. God put it in me because I am friends with Jesus, laughed Lucas. He said, it's the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? asked Peter. The alarm bell. But he is not just the alarm bell. He does other things too. Other things? Peter asked again, looking puzzled. Like what? He said, when I read Bible stories, I know what part of the story God wants me to understand that day. It's like having someone to sit next to you, explaining what the difficult parts mean. And when I am sad, he makes me feel better, like giving a hug on the inside. And he gives each person something different that they can be good at so that they can use that thing to help one another. What kind of thing? asked Peter. Like being able to cheer up someone who is lonely or help someone who is in need or reconcile classmates who do not speak to each other. Lucas replied, So the Holy Spirit is an alarm bell, a teacher, a hug and a giver of useful things? said Peter, summarizing in one line what his friend said. Yes, he is, answered Lucas. Does your alarm bell ring near the ice cream store? asked Peter anxiously. No, said Lucas. In that case, I think I like the Holy Spirit, concluded Peter, and asked the ice cream man for two chocolate ice cream bars. Dear friends, the story of Peter and Lucas gives us an idea about how the Holy Spirit helps us. But as Lucas said, the Holy Spirit does more than those things he mentioned. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness and self-control. We receive the gifts of the Spirit in confirmation particularly to help us proclaim God's presence in our world and to announce His kingdom at work in us. Confirmation gives us the special strength we need to fulfill our calling from God to love and serve as Jesus did. 
the outpouring of the spirit in confirmation as in the upper room at the first pentecost he received only once but the graces it confers are available to us every day with the power to renew our hearts the holy spirit enlightens the mind and heart it gives increased knowledge and understanding of jesus his gospel and the mysteries of faith it also moves a person to love jesus more dearly and strengthens the desire to please and obey him so dear friends let's be ready to be empowered by the gifts of the holy spirit through the sacrament of confirmation amen Hi dear friends in Jesus Christ peace to you all in the previous lesson we learned about the first set of beatitudes namely being poor in the spirit being mournful meek and seeking justice in today's lesson we are going to know about the other four beatitudes the second set of beatitudes which refer to our relationship with our fellow human beings Here we go. The Beatitudes part 2. Matthew chapter 5 verses 7 to 10. The fifth beatitude. Blessed are the merciful for they will receive mercy. Mercy is the benevolent nature towards those who suffer. Being merciful refers to firstly the pardoning of one's neighbor. We read in Matthew chapter 6 verse 12. Part of the our father. Forgive our trespasses. as we forgive those who trespass against us because if we forgive others their wrongs our father in heaven will also forgive ours secondly to love even our enemies what god wants is mercy because far more important in the law of god is justice mercy and faith and we must practice them without neglecting others jesus invites us to be merciful just as our heavenly father is merciful luke chapter 6 verse 36 our response to this beatitude is forgiving those who are unkind to us look for ways to show kindness to others the sixth beatitude blessed are the pure in heart for they will see god to be pure of heart means to be free of all selfish purposes and self-seeking motives As we read in Psalm 15 verse 2 about this kind of people those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart and stand close to justice faithful to God's commands and do sincere worship they experience God's presence in their lives our response to this beatitude is doing what is right and just because we know it is the right thing to do The seventh beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Here, peace is based on Old Testament shalom, means total well-being, unity, and reconciliation. Peacemaking is closely related to the to the love of neighbor and to the beatitude of the merciful. Peacemakers not only live peaceful lives, but also try to bring peace and friendship to others. And preserve peace between God and man by imitating God's love for humanity the peacemakers become children of God Jesus is the prince of peace we read in John chapter 20 verses 19 and 21 the words of the risen lord to the disciples peace be with you the whole humanity finds real peace in Jesus Christ and we become the channels of his peace our response to this beatitude is trying to bring God's peace to the world we control our behavior so people can see Jesus in us the eighth beatitude blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness for this is the kingdom of heaven these people are persecuted on account of Jesus it was the situation of the early christian community and even now when we listen to the words of Jesus and transform our lives and bring personal and societal changes as Jesus did then we will be persecuted it means we would face difficulties and problems and living out the true spirit of christ 
we will belong to the kingdom of god when we stand for the values of the gospel and live a life of radical witness to christ our response to this beatitude is willing to stand up for god's laws even if we are insulted or face difficulties dear friends these are the second set of beatitudes being merciful pure in heart being peacemakers and being persecuted for the sake of kingdom of god we experience in and around us the cries of the poor the endless harassment and violence many are humiliated and killed those who have heard the teachings of jesus especially the beatitudes cannot be silent let us ask the lord for the grace and strength to live according to the values of christ okay friends let us meet in the next week and we'll be knowing about i am sayings of jesus god bless you all shalom good evening i am father gilbert from nidiga don bosco calcutta i am back again with another gospel magic for our catechism session today's session is meant for children preparing for first holy communion it is also very good people who like to know children like to know about two sacraments the sacrament of reconciliation that is confession and the sacrament of the holy eucharist the holy communion how to understand well these two sacraments very important in our catholic life so let me begin by introducing these two sacraments uh, in our daily lives uh, you know when we are baptized our sins were all removed even the original sin most important one is cleaned up but as we are now we are not that clean over the years we have gathered the dirt and stain and wounds of sin and when we go for confession we think of normally of our sins that we have committed especially we go through the list of 10 commandments whether we have committed any sins against any of the commandments there are also other list of sins in the catechism books and one set of sins they are called actually capital sins or capital vices they are anger sloth pride envy etc they are also sins that we go through in our daily lives so when we go for confessions it is good to check whether we have gone through all these sins and all our deeds our words our life is registered in heaven in god's mind if you read the book of psalms psalm 139 especially says god knows everything the time we are born much before we are born and the same psalm says there is a book of remembrance book of life where everything is registered in god's mind something like a book of life in heaven for each one of us now compare this book as a book of each one's life in heaven where all our doings all our behavior actions words deeds everything is registered in heaven and if we open our book now our book is not that clean you will find all these capital vices i am going to show you uh, something like you know different types of sins that we have committed lust gluttony sloth envy anger everything that we have everything so this is our life now but nothing to be frightened we have beautiful sacrament sacrament of reconciliation which we call confession and when we go through this this sacrament of confession god touches our heart through the ministry of priesthood and deletes and removes all our sins but there are conditions for the sacrament of con- confession we need to be really have the true sorrow for what we confess without sorrow no sins can be forgiven with a true sorrow 
and all the conditions set to us through the sacrament of confession then god forgives and forgets our sins and it is true once god forgives he forgets in god's computer there is no recycle bin it cannot be recycled once deleted is deleted forever and let us think of ourselves with true sorrow and contrition we are confessed our sins through this sacrament of confession then our book of life is changed our book of life is everything is changed and if we open our book of life after the confession it will be clean nothing inside all the sins all the capital vices are deleted from this everything goes then after the confession we go for another sacrament sacrament of the holy eucharist there we receive jesus into our hearts and once we participate in the holy eucharist we can receive into our pure heart now after the sacrament of confession and receive this jesus and after we receive jesus our book of life is full of jesus full of jesus nothing else nobody else can enter into our hearts and this is what we see in the book of life after the sacrament of the holy eucharist now i am sure with this pandemic and lockdown we cannot participate in the holy eucharist if you are able to participate very good receive the holy communion if you are not able to participate through the live stream participate in the mass and receive the holy communion spiritually beautiful prayer of saint alphonsus liguori is an act of spiritual communion say that prayer and receive jesus spiritually into our hearts thank you very much god be with you we will be back again for another catechism class through this gospel magic next time back to you again thank you god bless you all of you i hope you have been having a wonderful time but now it's time to learn about the new saint so let's saint a story once again here we are at the gates of heaven so let's recap a bit in the center we have saint john bosco towards his left we have saint therese of lisieux Towards her left, we have Saint Francis of Assisi. Towards the right here, we have Saint Ignatius of Loyola. For those of you who took part in the activity called "Who is that Saint?" last week, and if you are able to figure out who the saint is for today, congratulations! I would like to add in a little point. I've actually noticed the comment section, and I'm really glad to see a very good user engagement. So many of you have replied with the saint's name or in the comment section. It's really nice to see all of you engaged. So thank you for that. And for those of you who couldn't figure out who today's saint is, today is the day you get to learn more about the saint and try to change your lives a bit, learning more from the saint. So let's go ahead and meet the saint. So this is going to be a casual encounter. Just like the previous times, imagine you are at a hotel or uh, at a park meeting with a saint. You want to make a new friend, so you begin by asking questions. To which the saint replies, and you sort of make a new friend by getting to know more about the saint. So let's go and converse with the saint. This is the person you see in front of you. He looks very devoted and faithful. So let's just go ahead and talk to him. You start off by saying, "Hi, it's so nice to meet you. May I know your name?" To which the saint replies, "Greetings. My name is Saint Augustine. 
popularly known as St. Augustine of Hippo. Tell me more about your childhood and your youth. I was born on the 13th of November 357 AD to St. Monica and Patrick at Tagaste in Northern Africa. My mother was a devout Christian and my father was a pagan. I was very intelligent as a child. My mother tried to make me spiritual by forcing me to attend prayers and listen to the church teachings. But I never bothered. I was never interested in them. I was very naughty in my childhood and my youth. My parents were rich and had plenty to eat and drink. But I still indulged in many sinful habits like stealing. I didn't do it for the money. I did it just to know how it felt and to gain popularity among my friends. One fine day, I had been with my friends to my neighbor's field to steal some pears. I stole a lot of them and me and my friends ate a few of those. We threw away the rest of the pears to the pigs. To my surprise, when I wanted to sleep that day, I wasn't able to, even though I had done worse things in my past. Guilt had filled my mind. My mother found out about it and she kept praying for me. But I was so proud that I didn't even bother listening to her. All she wanted was for me to come to church. But I continued getting into more and more trouble as the days went by. When I was 17, I went to a place named Carthage to learn oratory skills. There, I met a woman who I fell in love with. I had an illicit relationship with her and we had a child. I was even offered a job as an oratory professor at a place named Milan. So, I had gone to see my mother and inform her. She had still been praying for me to become a good man. When I told her that I would be going to Milan, she insisted on coming with me so that she could try to change me for the better. That's interesting. What happened at Milan? Well, I took up my job and performed my duties. My mother used to force me to go to church. There was a bishop there named Ambrose. My mother wanted me to meet him. So, she took me to partake in one of his masses. When he spoke that day, his words inspired me. He spoke about humility and caring for the unfortunate around you. My mother had sought advice from the bishop on how to change me. The bishop reassured her by saying that I would hear God's call when the time was right. Upon hearing the bishop's sermon, I had become so confused. I studied a lot and put in lots of efforts to reach where I was at that point. But the unfortunate still stepped into God's kingdom earlier than me. This really troubled me. One day, as I was strolling through a garden, I heard a voice that said, Take and read. I was confused. There was nothing to read. To my surprise, when I looked down, I found a book. It was the Bible. When I opened it, the very first line I read was, Not in writing and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. This really spoke to me and from this point on, I became a changed man. I immediately rushed home to tell my mother. She had become really excited and she told me about a vision that she had. In her vision, she had been standing on a plank and was crying. Then. A man with a joyous smile approached her and reassured her that her prayers would be answered. She believed that this man was God himself. 
Shortly afterwards, I was baptized on Easter Day by Bishop Ambrose and I returned to the castle along with my mother and son. What happened upon returning to the castle? While returning, when we reached the port of Austria, my mother fell ill. She knew that her work had been accomplished. All she wanted was to see me as a Christian. She passed away shortly after and she is still remembered as a perfect example of a Christian mother. How did you become a saint? Well, shortly after my mother passed away, I returned to Carthage. I was looking forward to a life of solitude and reflection, but my writings made me popular. I was soon made a priest and then the Bishop of Hippo. That's why I'm more commonly known as St. Augustine of Hippo. I was inspired a lot by Bishop Ambrose. I took upon my duties and responsibilities with utmost diligence and care. I had written 113 books on treatises, over 200 letters, and more than 500 sermons. One very important event in my life is this. One day, I was walking by the seashore trying to contemplate and understand the mysteries of the Holy Trinity. I met a small boy there who was walking back and forth, taking water from the sea and pouring it into a small hole. When I asked him what he was doing, he told me that he was trying to fit the sea into that hole. I told him that it isn't possible. That is, the boy gave me an astonishing reply. He pointed out to me by saying that that's what I was trying to do by contemplating on the mysteries of the Holy Trinity. He said that I wouldn't be able to understand the immensity of the Holy Trinity with my small intelligence. I was completely surprised. The boy then disappeared. I believe that the boy was Jesus himself. After this, I practiced poverty and became very charitable. The only regret I had was not following the Lord from a younger age. I passed on to heaven on the 28th of August, 430 AD. That's such an inspiring story. What can I do to be more like you? Well, all you need to remember is that it's never too late to change your ways and follow God. I turned from a very sinful person to a saint. So can you. Never pass the opportunity to know God. Live a charitable life. Confess your sins regularly. God has a plan for each one of us. We just have to hear His call. It was really great meeting you, St. Augustine. It was great meeting you too. Keep praying for me and pray to me. I too will be praying for you from our Papa. Before I leave, I would like to leave you with this quote. Do you wish to rise? Begin by descending. To plan a tar that will pierce the clouds, lay first the foundation of humility. Good going! You made a friend in St. Augustine of Hippo. Remember, it's what you learn that counts. Hearing the life of St. Augustine, take in all the values that you learned from his experience and his life and incorporate it into your own lives. Be more charitable. It doesn't matter, all of us are sinners, but all of us can become saints just like St. Augustine. So what's stopping you? Today can be the day you change. So this brings us back to the gates of heaven. So as we can see, St. Augustine of Hippo has joined the ensemble. Now here's the activity called, Who's that saint? Towards the left, we have a silhouette of a saint and towards the right, we have a set of clues 
that are related to the silhouette on the left. So clubbing the silhouette and the clues on the right, figure out who the saint is. The clue reads out, Italian Capuchin Friar, Sigmata of Christ. So using the silhouette on the left and the clues on the right, if you can figure out who the saint is, type the answer in the comment section below. If you are not able to figure out who the saint is, tune in next, next week to learn more about the saint. So thank you and saint in your life.